Hi, I'm Tony Nichols, and welcome to Chamber Chat. Hi, I'm Tony Nichols and welcome to Chamber Chat, a program put together by the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce to keep you informed on what's going on in your community and in your chamber. And joining us now is Sharon DeShield, the community co-lead for the Eastern Shore Mission of Mercy. Correct. Sharon, welcome Correct. to Chamber Chat. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I have, uh, we were talking earlier and um, for people that supposedly know a lot of people, we've just met. So right. it's, it's right. nice to, uh, <laughs> to meet someone that you haven't met when you supposedly know everyone on right, the shore. Right, exactly. Um, so Sharon, I guess uh, that typically with a, with a topic like this, the, the first thing to get out there is tell us what Mission of Mercy is. Okay, the Mission of Mercy is um, an event that's been happening in Salisbury. They've had it twice, 2013 and then 2015. So this will be the third go-round for us here. But the Mission of Mercy started years ago, actually in 2010. The first one in Maryland was in Cumberland. But it started in Virginia, realizing they needed to address the needs of dental mm -hmm. health. And the Mission of Mercy that is put on in Salisbury is a two-day event. And believe it or not, it is all volunteer. You have licensed professional dentists, hygienists that are, will be doing the work. And then we had the last one, 2015, over 1,400 volunteers. Wow. Two-day event, mm -hmm. first come, first serve. Sure. You know, I, you know in, in doing a little bit of research before the show, it is, to your point, it's a much uh, bigger event or much bigger organization than Salisbury. Correct. So how, Correct. how far does it reach? Is it is it as far as Cumberland or is it does it reach further up and down the coast? It's actually all over the okay. country. You, okay. you can they have a website that mm -hmm. you can read more about it. But locally here it is hosted by the Eastern Shore Dental Society, which is part of the Maryland Dental um, Society. And that's where you have the commitment from so many of the professional people that are working any, in any um, capacity dealing with dentistry. So where were, the, where, you know, I think the, the last time it was at the convention center? Is, is it, that where it's going to be this time? And it will be at the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center, mm -hmm. March the 10th and the 11th, which is a Friday and a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, the part of it that's most disturbing for all of us that are involved in it is the fact we have to turn people away. Oh, sure. Um, I would imagine And so. it's immediate care on the spot, obviously, as you know. You know, it's first come, first serve, and it opens at 7 in the morning on the 10th of March. And we will know when we have been filled to capacity after lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Someone may say, well, it's open all day. That does not mean come uh, right. after lunch and you will get in. Mm -hmm. So we turn people away, unfortunately. We did last year on Friday. Once we reach capacity, mm -hmm. the dentists determine how many more patients we are able to take. Right. And there were only three things we're doing. Fillings, extractions, and uh, dental cleaning. And as well, you have a nutritional dental care piece that you can participate with in. Well, well like so many other things, your 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 teeth, your dental health, is not only impacted by how you take care of yourself, but it's impacted by hereditary. Your 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 parents, your family. Uh, you can uh, so it could be not anything that a, a, an individual has done per se, but they just they hereditated they they hereditated uh, um, they inherited I should say um, a a bad gene that relates to their teeth. So it's not something that people should be um, uh, embarrassed about right. to try to come and get some help, show up early and well, get some help. What, are, are there any other things that uh, the, the, the pa potential patients would need to know before they show up? Well, there are a couple of things. On uh, this day and age, it's not about what you make as far as having mm -hmm. dental assistance. Sure. The insurance is not affordable to a lot of Correct. people. 
And when you're talking about what you have inherited, some people put their children and other family members first mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And the first, com the only problem is we cannot see anyone under 18. Please do not bring anyone yeah. under 18 because be we don't have child away. care or right. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, and the thing is, they have something like that in the school system now to address okay. the students and children. But um, when a patient comes, you will get a band outside when you line up at the Civic Center. And it will be, again, first come, first serve. If you get out of line or if you leave, unfortunately, you have to go to the end of the line. If you're not seen on Friday, you can come back on Saturday morning again and go through the same process. Mm -hmm. So. We try to see as many as we possibly can. Please keep in mind that um, if you are on medication, continue to take your medication. We worry about people that have diabetes mm. and we worry about others that need to stay hydrated. So please take your meds, bring your meds with you as well because when you are in line, once you are admitted into the Civic Center, there will be a screening, you'll go through a medical screening. Okay and you go through a, um, a triage of sort that determines whether you need fillings or whether you need a, an extraction, that mm -hmm. type of thing. And there will be x-rays taken, and then you will go on to the arena floor where we had um, 130 dental chairs wow. last time, which is a lot. Wow, that is a lot. And actually it translated into $850,000 in professional wow. assistance from the hygienists and from the dentists yeah, and either professionals. Friends, some friends mm -hmm. that, that participated last time. Right, right. Video. So how, how can people that are watching the program help? How can, how can the community make an impact to help the, the, the doctors coming in, the dentists coming in. Three ways. Surgeries. You can go to our website, www.easternshoremom.org, mm -hmm. and you can sign up to volunteer. Okay. And when you volunteer, there are multiple shifts and multiple, multiple teams you can help with. No experience is necessary. Just see what your is interesting mm -hmm. to you. And then you can do a form of donation in kind we had, I think it was $174,000 translated in in kind sure. the last time. And as well as financial, because mm -hmm. obviously uh, publicity, publicity and uh, buying food and mm -hmm. things like that are all um, expense items. Right. And tell your neighbors, we have flyers around. And the other thing, you can really participate immediately before March by attending uh, two fundraisers we're having. Okay. We're having a fundraiser at headquarters live, mm -hmm. uh, the 26th, from 5 to 8. Mm -hmm. And um, that's anybody can just come in and join us. Sure. It's, um, it's called Floss, if you see in a flyer around. Yeah. That helps with mom. That's put on by the uh, local realtors and lenders in our community, so they're already on board with that. And then we have another fundraiser, which is February the 18th, and that will be at the Fenwick Inn in Ocean City. And that is Till Death Do Us Part. Hmm. So it's a mystery dinner. So oh, that will be fun. Good. And tickets are available on our website for both of those events. Very good. Uh, so um, the Community Foundation plays a, a small role. Before we, before we wrap this segment up, well, how does the Community Foundation play a role here? In 2010, we addressed the Community Foundation um, to take the funding and they also support us okay. as well with a mm -hmm. uh, very kind uh, donation and their credibility is tremendous in the community so any donations cash donations that you make they will be made out to the community foundation okay. mm -hmm. so you know you are in good hands and it goes to the right source Sharon, give us the, that contact information one more time before we wrap this up. www.easternshoremom.org Sharon, thanks so much for coming in and uh, sharing such a worthy event uh, with our viewers. Thank you. My pleasure. I hope everyone joins us because it's such a worthwhile endeavor. Me too. We'd like to give you an opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce.
Welcome back to Chamber Chat right here on PAT 14. Joining us now is Maurice Ames, Director of Operations for Maryland Capital Enterprise and the Women's Business Center. Did I get all that right? You got it correct. Maurice, welcome to Chamber Chat, man. Thanks for having me here, sir. Um, so, Maryland Capital Enterprise has become a very a staple in the business community and the startup community, but there might be some people out here that that don't know what Maryland Capital Enterprise or MCE as most of us know it as is. So could you give us an idea of what Maryland Capital Enterprise and Women Business Center is? MCE is a private nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that provides consulting, technical assistance, and possible financing um, for some of our clients um, in the state of Maryland. Okay. Um, we cover the entire Eastern Shore and Baltimore City and Baltimore County. We also have a women's business mm -hmm. center that focus only on our women clients. Okay, gotcha. So, you know, one of the questions that I was going to have later on is, do, do you have to be a, a, a female to work with the Women's Business Center, but you just answered that question? Well, you so, do not. That's okay, that's good. That's good to, that's you, good to you hear. You do not have to be a woman to um, be a part of our Women's Business Center. Because most organizations like that don't. It's just the focus is towards women, but anyone can uh, participate. That's so correct. So it sounds like it's the same, same yes. scenario. So is there is there a, is there a size limit for or or a, a better fit? Because Maryland Capital Enterprise impacts a lot of businesses, That's a lot correct. of people. Um, is there is there a uh, a niche? Is there a, a a perfect client size for you? Well, there's no perfect client size. Okay. Um, we like for the business to be um, up to 50 employees. Okay. Uh, 50 past that, mm -hmm. um, we we would still assist you, sure. but we wouldn't be able to loan you money. I understand. We have certain criteria for mm -hmm. loaning money. All right. Um, so, what is it that is is required? You know, we talked about you know about my 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 question, which I was wrong in my assumption. Um, so you don't have to be a, a, a woman to be a part of the Women's Business Center. Yes. But what is the criteria to well, become a part of the Women's Business the Center? The criteria is you must own a business or want help in getting started in business. So would that be the same for the Women's Business Center and Maryland Capital Enterprise as a whole? That's correct. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I, so I would assume you know, people that have the interest in starting a business or they've started a business and they need some guidance, um, I, would, I would think there are training classes, a plethora, okay, I, okay, I already know. There are a lot of training classes that you guys offer, so give us an idea of, of well, what you guys do. One of the main training classes that we do is how to start a business, and that is every third Wednesday of the month mm -hmm. at the one stop. Job Center. Okay. We have many other trainings, um, such as uh, QuickBooks, which is very important in um, starting a business. Very sought after. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, m uh, a lot of our clients, uh, my BBSI clients, that are looking for uh, employees. Certainly, if they're in the office, I would say top the the the, the number one thing looked for is experience in QuickBooks. Yes. So. What, what other types of trainings do you guys offer? Well, um, we have um, women's luncheons all the time. Okay. Empowerment lunches. Okay, sure. Where women just get together and they put out their ideas. Yeah. Um, we have um, different trainings on how to do your taxes. Okay. Um, there's just, just so many I can't name. Well, I, I know that I, there's, there's many, uh, in fact, because uh, Ben... Um, housed in the chamber. I, I see you guys all the time. Yes. Um, so for that person that is contemplating starting a business and they want to come to your, um, you know, how to start a business class or they need some QuickBooks training because they know they're going to have to do their own books. Mm -hmm. um, is there, are, are there, are there fees for these trainings and services that you guys offer? Most of our trainings are, f are free. Okay. Um, we do an MBE class, um, which would help minorities get a certain certification mm -hmm. so they can apply for um, different state jobs. There is a small fee for that, which I think is around $15. Okay. But the most of our classes are free. Gotcha. Very good. Um, so MCE, you know, is certainly over the last seven, eight, ten years uh, become a, a very integral part of the business community, certainly in startups. 
But how long have you guys been around? What's what's the history of, of well, MCE? And we've been around since 2000. Okay. Um, so that's given us 16, uh, 17 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and since then, our portfolio has just just grown. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yes. In the last several years, the last several um, years, you you've you've really grown. It's, it's doubled in the last um, in the last two years, actually. Wow. Um, so where, where are you located in Salisbury? I just gave a little heads up uh, a minute ago, but where are you guys located in Salisbury? We're located at 144 East Main Street. Uh, we're actually in the Chamber of Commerce building upstairs on mm -hmm. the second floor. And when you go in, before you go into the Chamber of Commerce, turn left first. That's there's correct. That, That's that correct. Door. Uh, yes. I've seen it once or twice. Yes. <laughs> um, so what, what are your, do, do people need to call, uh, schedule an appointment? Can they just walk in and see you? What are your hours? What? How, how well, do they get up with it? Normally, we try to do appointments, but we do accept walk-ins. And our, our, our hours of operation is 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Okay. Um, so if, if you had to, to give some advice to that person that's anxious about doing that, they're nervous because they don't want to be viewed as they don't, um, they don't know enough to come mm -hmm. see you, um, what would the piece of advice be to those people to, to get them to step off the curb? Bring your ideal to MCE and we'll help you walk off the curb. We will walk you through the process. We will assist you in filling out all your paperwork. Leave the fear at home and come see MCE. That's, that's, the, that's the perfect spot to end on. Leave the fear at home and come see MCE. That's fantastic. Maurice, thanks for joining us on Chamber Chat. Thank you, sir. We'd like to give you another opportunity now to take a look at the upcoming events with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Chamber Chat right here on PAC 14 and joining us now is Kathy Diekman, the Director of Member Services with the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the yes. program. Thank you. Thank so you I, I guess maybe I should start with congratulations and then welcome to Chamber oh, Chat. thank you. Uh, yeah. Very good. So after an extensive nationwide search, <laughs> we, uh, we, we, uh, we found Kathy and uh, the Chamber is absolutely thus far after a whole month. Thus far, <laughs> lucky to have you on board. So Thank uh, you. I really enjoy you. it. So this is going to be, you know, you probably have been asked this question so many times in, you know, uh, landing in this role, uh, whether it be interviewing or people asking you. But so this is going to be almost an interrogation of sorts because we want to find out who you are. So, so tell us who you are. And start with, I was born, no, you don't, to, you don't have to start there, but just tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Minnesota. <laughs> a lot of people find that sort of interesting. I heard it when you said Minnesota. Yeah. That's the, that's the I've almost I lost my accent, but evidently not quite. Not, yeah, I heard so. Um, I lived there through my college days. I went to the College of St. Benedict, achieved a government degree there, okay. and then went on to Syracuse University for a master's degree in international relations and conflict resolution. Had every intention of moving back to Minnesota, but never did. Ended up meeting my husband, and we stayed there in Syracuse for about five years until he finished uh, his PhD. Mm -hmm. And then we lived in Florida for about six years, and then moved back to the Eastern Shore to be closer to his family, and we've been here ever since. Well, so, if I'm, I'm a come here, so you, you are too. I am too. I think it's, it's, it's about as close to paradise as you can get mm -hmm. around here. We love it. We consider it this our home. You know, we've we uh, been here 16 years. We have three children in school here, so my husband teaches at Sir, uh, Salisbury University. Mm -hmm. So Very good. So, you know, you, you left the, the Antarctica, as I would call it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you go to California, um, for you go to Florida, which is heaven, mm -hmm. and then you you settled for paradise in between. How about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. So, since you've been here, uh, what kind of uh, um, involvements in the community? Uh, what things have you found that 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 you? Uh, 
uh, find yourself being passionate about that that you'd like to share with everybody? Mm -hmm. Well, I worked for a number of years for the Bosterman Center for Conflict Resolution at Salisbury University. That's my key area of interest mm -hmm. is violence prevention and, and conflict resolution in the community. So I did research, writing, um, conflict intervention, mediation, and a fair bit of training in conflict resolution skills. Mm -hmm. But I have a heart for the community. I just, the place where I live, I want mm -hmm. it to be a positive place, not just for me, but for, for all who, who live there. So finding a job at the chamber turned out to be a real gift. That's a that you... And um, I volunteer with scouts because my son is a scout. Mm -hmm. I'm on the organizing committee. I volunteer with an organization called Athletes Serving Athletes and at my church as a lector and catechist. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you're certainly you could go, you could take church in and of itself, and that could consume all of your time. But certainly, scouts, mm -hmm. you, uh, you could you could spend uh, more time than you have mm -hmm. <laughs> being involved in scouts. Um, all right, so interrogation continues. Okay, I'm up for it. Family, pets, uh, <laughs> other interests, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. We have three children, so that keeps us busy. Certainly, sure their does. interests become our interests, mm -hmm. um, but I still have a, a personal life and, and interests such as uh, running. <laughs> I'm involved, as I said, with athletes, serving athletes. So you're one of those people. You're a yeah, runner. Yeah, proud of I it. I always said those people. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of at the low level, though. I haven't run any ultras or anything like that, but I really enjoy using it as a way to serve. Um, this organization, Athletes Serving Athletes, mm -hmm. helps folks with differing abilities to compete in um, mainstream events, 5Ks, sure. 10Ks, even half marathons mm -hmm. and marathons. Yeah. Um, I enjoy cooking, especially international foods and you know, trying different of the restaurants around here of different ethnic things. There are things. some good ones around here to dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And um, really love to travel both um, nationally but internationally. We don't do that as much now that we have children. but. I really enjoy it and reading about international things. That's just always been a passion of mine. Very good. So you're, you join the chamber and fortunately for us, we finally have someone in the uh, director of membership position that knows what she was doing. She's doing because Kathy Thomas, oh, who is a wonderful person and who <laughs> was, has done wonderful things for the chamber. I love you, Kathy. Um, <laughs> Uh, she she's moved on and and is in a role now with uh, the United Way that is you know there couldn't have been a better role created for her certainly a loss for the chamber to lose her um, but certainly a, a plus for us to to gain you what 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 are you seeing at the chamber that um, you can enhance the 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 programs that Kathy has built and I've been a big part of over many years mm -hmm. worked with her you know, many, many hours with the chamber. What are some things that, that you feel like you will uh, take initiative on with the Chamber of Commerce uh, to enhance the membership area? Well, first, I do feel I have big shoes to fill because yeah, I was very uh, tongue Kathy, cheek. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> but to her defense, she's been really generous in showing me the yes. ropes. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot to learn. I've only been there a month, so I'm kind of getting the lay of the land mm -hmm. and really enjoying and impressed by the, the, the breadth of knowledge, the level of extra expertise, mm -hmm. the diversity of, of types of folks that make up our membership. Mm -hmm. It's just really exciting and interesting to me. So I'm still kind of in the, the listening and learning stage. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to listen really to the membership where they in part think um, membership services needs to go. You know, I hope to just do my best to help them meet their goals and, and go beyond it in a way that helps serve the community. Because I think that's one thing that is so wonderful about the Chamber, that it's not just about business. While business certainly is really important, right. I do believe that a positive business environment serves everyone. Sure. But we have um, our members involved in so many different community-related events from mm -hmm. Um, the fair, the Wakamaka Fair, yeah. the Salisbury Days, um, Restaurant Week, you know, so I hope to tap into our member services and help them, you know, find their niche of where they might 
serve the community in their own interests through some of those events. Um, I'd certainly like to grow our membership. We have a goal of reaching a thousand members mm -hmm. by 2020. Yep. Um, let's see. You know, I, I would like to let the community know, really promote the chamber to help them realize what's in it for them at the chamber right. and how the chamber serves them and can just strengthen our community overall. So that might be through different PR campaigns or, mm -hmm. you know, working with Lauren in events or Sophia in media and networking. Well, I will, I have to say that that answer certainly qualifies you <laughs> to have your role because it's, 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 you know, uh, this is unscripted on Chamber Chat, by the way. Um, <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that because if I got booted on Chamber Chat, that yeah, would be right. really well, embarrassing. Well, this was the litmus <laughs> test. They, they didn't tell you that, but Chamber Chat was the litmus test of whether or not you're going to make it. Um, but that is absolutely a, a true statement about, you know, the, the, the one thing that, that I pulled out of that was, you know, you talk about the, the diversity of the membership. And it's, it's, a, it's, a fine, it's, a, it's a delicate dance between the staff and the membership because the staff doesn't run the chamber. The membership runs the chamber. Mm -hmm. And if you flip that the other way, it's not the membership that runs this chamber, it's the staff that runs the chamber. So at the end of the day, there, there's a delicate mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. where one is supporting the other, um, and the end result when it's done properly is what you have now with the Chamber of Commerce, and it's just a, a very well-run organization where people um, have the intent to do right things right every single time. I agree. Um, that, uh, that was something that was immediately evident to me was that sense of goodwill and collaboration. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was really impressive and infectious. So I want to take that and run with it. Okay, so if, if, you're, if your previous <clears throat> answer that you just gave, which was perfect, you'll go back and, and, and watch this and say, wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> um, we can hope. If, if, if that wasn't sales pitch enough, what would be your what would be your pitch to the community or to a to uh, a business that's contemplating joining the chamber? I think really the best sales pitch I would have to credit with one of our members who I won't name, but I think it was our first week, and we were in a meeting. If and I know who it is, I'll call him out. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke very plainly, and he said, "If you're not a member of the chamber, you're really missing out." Um, that's how I would paraphrase it. Sure. And. I would encourage people to check out our webpage to mm -hmm. see what all is going on at the chamber. There's it's not just, you know, business related events. Mm -hmm. There's community related events, beautification, um, fun things for the family, fundraisers that are that are good for, you know, the area around Salisbury, not just downtown. Mm -hmm. So learn about your chamber and see how you can become involved. Last question, do you know first aid? Yes, I do. Because I'm thinking I might need some first aid when Kathy Thomas views this edition of Chamber Chat. So <laughs> we'll, we'll just we'll see. How I have a scout are. who has a badge in that too. Fantastic. So he put can him, handle broken him, bones, wounds, what put, have put you. Put him on alert. <laughs> we'll do. Kathy Diekman, welcome to the chamber, and thank you so much for joining us on Chamber Chat. Oh, it's been a pleasure. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Chamber Chat. And as always, if you missed any portion of this program or you'd like to view previous editions of Chamber Chat, you can visit Chamber Chat's webpage and utilize their on-demand feature or visit the Chamber of Commerce's website. That's about all the time we have for this edition of Chamber Chat. My name's Tony Nichols, your host, encouraging you to make a difference. Mm -hmm.